Hi, I'm Dave Stewart here at Amoeba Records, and they want to know what's in my bag. On a sunny day, on a sunny day, I'll be crying, Lord. On a sunny day, on a sunny day, I see people walking in the park. Well, I've been out and out until dark. I'll be just crying on a sunny day. The first one is R.L. Burnside, who uh, I was fortunate enough to meet and actually sit and play with him on his front porch. And I produced a film called Deep Blues that had R.L. Burnside and Jesse May Hemphill and uh, lots of other great blues artists. And it was in about 1992. I didn't actually want to be in the film. This is a funny thing. I was just trying to document all these blues players who were getting on, on a bit, you know, and um, I was kind of forced into the situation of being in the movie because to get it distributed, it was at the sort of peak of Eurythmics and they'd, no TV companies had heard of any of these artists, so it was like impossible to get it. But uh, actually, when the cameras went on, we jammed for ages, you know. I asked him to teach me a song called Jumper on the Line. And he was kind of teaching me in, it was kind of, I kind of sort of faked it for the movie, but, uh, <laughs> but it was amazing meeting him and his family and it was a real trip. See my jumper, oh Lord, hey, I don't lie. This next record, Marvin Gaye, Let's Get It On. The trouble is, <clears throat> you tend to buy the same album over and over again. So like, you know, I've bought Astral Weeks about 50 times and I've bought Lou Reed, Transformer, again. Um, you know, I've bought both these albums about 20 times each on various things, cassettes, CDs, back to the vinyl whatever but you know then you move around well I do and you take it on tour or you lose it and or people ask for it and you give them it so I have to keep stocking up so I probably learned every song on this album and actually had the great fortune to play live with Lou on stage and um, you know I've done all sorts of things with him I never met Marvin Gaye in my life and there's one person I was just in awe of and it was a great documentary later in life where he was really down and I think it's made in Belgium and it's just, he's in a rehearsal room and he's, he's really depressed and he's lying on the floor and out of all of that came this amazing slew of work. I'm an orphan at the moment and Ostend is my orphanage. There are places I would probably rather be, but um, I probably need to be here. Annie and I, Annie being my partner in Eurythmics, would listen to Marvin Gaye over and over and over. We actually listened before to all the Motown stuff, because we were obsessed with Motown and then very hardcore sort of um, cold European electronic stuff, like Deutsche American Friendship, DAF or Kraftwerk, but that's a long story, but anyway, Sweet Dreams, the song, was born out of the marriage of this soul feeling and underneath it, this hardcore uh, electronic feeling. Everybody's looking for something, some of them want to use you. Okay, <clears throat> this is another album that um, I've bought a number of times and it's funny enough, Annie and I, when we weren't known and we were struggling to cheer ourselves up, we used to play I'll Take You There by the Stable Singers. And we used to play it if we played somewhere live, whatever. And, and they became a great inspiration for us. And um, later on in our records, lots of the harmonies that we you know, put on the record were born out of hints of Stable Singers and bass lines. I mean, one of the greatest bass lines of all time. Uh, is on some stable singers record.
Now, no matter what you think of rock and roll, I think you have to keep a nice open mind about what the young people go for. Now, if we're ready for our rock and roll specialists, we have Buddy, Holly, and the Crickets. I was trying to find a Buddy Holly album, but there was none left. There was his sign was there, but there was no Buddy Holly vinyl. And then I saw this interesting compilation with, you know, Words of Love by Patti Smith. And funnily enough, I just got approached by Buddy Holly's uh, wife, who's still alive today, and the foundation. And they're going to give me Buddy Holly's original guitar. It's the first time ever to be played live on stage again, and it's on his birthday, September the 7th. So I just recorded uh, Raining in My Heart, which is not a song that he wrote, actually. Soon the tears are bound to flow Cause it's raining Raining in my heart The Rolling Stones are my favourite number one rock and roll band of all time. <laughs> Any Rolling Stones track sounds great, even if it's recorded on a broken cassette microphone or it's recorded by Glyn Johns in a studio. And um, I am fortunate enough to have recorded Mick singing loads of times because I formed this kind of uh, collaborative uh, project called Super Heavy. You know, watching Mick Jagger put a vocal down is like insane because he can't not be on stage. So. You know, so I had to have a mic covered in like tea towels so that it doesn't make any noise. Or he's standing in front of a mic like that, belting it out, but he's still doing all the, the thing, you know. <laughs> First record I ever really heard of the blues, my cousin sent it from Memphis. And it was called Robert Johnson, King of the Delta Blues Singers. And he was just sitting on a kind of chair painting of him. It was recorded mostly in a hotel room, I think. And that's how I learned the guitar, was um, I couldn't understand what it was at first because of the very sort of thin voice and the weird guitar playing. But my brother had an acoustic guitar, which he went to college and I stole it. And I started to learn and I tuned my guitar to a chord. And then I got a wine bottle and <clears throat> what you do is you get some string and you go very fast like that and you put it under cold water and tap it and it snaps off and then you've got a slide. Because where I lived in the northeast of England, I didn't know where to get a slide. And I learned to play, you know, slide guitar and all that stuff. And I went from him onto all the great sort of Howlin' Wolf and Big Bill Broomsey and started to learn loads and loads of blues songs and blues fingerstyle like Mississippi John Hurt. There's this song called Satisfied and Tickled too, which I haven't heard for years, but I used to love the little, because he kind of plays the bass line with his thumb, and he finger picks the melody, you know, at the same time. I'm satisfied, tickled too, old enough to marry you, I'm satisfied, it's going to bring you back. I walked straight up to the back of the shop, and so my hand went like, oh, and like picked this off the shelf. And somebody else said, hey, we were going to buy that. And I won. But, uh, you know, there's certain moments in time. This is the great thing about music. And I don't know whether it's changed or not. Probably not because I have kids and they get so passionate about their thing. But there was a certain moment in time where you just get obsessed with certain artists. It can have a massive effect on the rest of your life. And so this is one of those artists. Revolution wasn't televised in the 60s. Uh, is it going to be televised in the 90s? Well, you know, the, the, the catchphrase, what that was all about, uh, the revolution will not be televised, that was about the fact that the first change that takes place is in your mind. You have to change your mind before you change the way you live and the, and the way you move. So when we said that the revolution will not be televised, we were saying that, like, that, that, that the thing that's going to change people is something that no one will ever be able to capture on film. The revolution will not be brought to you by the shape of a war theater and will not star Natalie Woods and Steve McQueen or Bullwinkle and Julia. Now that was great fun and uh, I'll continue shopping if you don't mind. Will not give your mouth sex appeal. The revolution will not get rid of the nub. The revolution will not make you look five pounds thinner because the revolution will not be televised, brother.
There will be no pictures of you and Willie Mae pushing that shopping cart down the block on the dead run or trying to slide that color TV into a stolen ambulance. NBC will not be able to predict the winner at 8.32 on report from 29 District. The revolution will not be televised.